visiting a local beach with your class? Get ready for some fun! When you get off the bus, gather everyone together before heading down to the beach. This is the best time to share information on how to interact with the animals you are going to see. If you registered on the Seattle Aquarium website to have one of our staff meet you at the beach, please wait for the instructor to join you before starting to explore. Bring layers of clothing because the weather can change quickly. Closed-toed shoes that protect your feet are great for exploration on our rocky beaches. Rainy days are great for exploration too. The beach is alive. Living creatures are everywhere if you know where and how to look for them. Explore carefully to keep these animals safe. Here are some of the animals we might see as we explore. Moon snails live under the sand, where they hunt clams by drilling holes into clamshells with their tongues, which have teeth on them. They come to the surface to lay their eggs, which are often mistaken for trash. These egg or sand collars have thousands of tiny moon snail eggs sandwiched between layers of sand. Be sure you leave these moon snail egg collars on the beach so they can hatch into baby snails. Clams are the moon snail's favorite food. The hole in this clamshell was drilled by a moon snail. We usually don't find living clams lying on the sand, just the shells. We can tell if there are living clams on the beach if we see squirts of water and the clam siphon, or neck, on the sand's surface. In addition to moon snails and clams, we can find many different kinds of crabs on Puget Sound beaches. Shore crabs live higher up on the beach and don't get very big. Red rock crabs have red shells and black-tipped pinchers. Their powerful pinch can break open clam and moon snail shells. Kelp crabs have long legs and blend in with brown kelp, their preferred food. All crabs choose their home on the beach carefully based on what they need to survive. Crabs have hard shells that they must shed to grow. Under the old shell is a new, soft one that needs a few days to harden once the crab has molted. The old shells are called molts, and we find them on the beach, where they are often mistaken for dead crabs. Sea anemones also live on our local beaches. They have a mouth and tentacles, which they use to sting and hold on to their food. Their stingers aren't powerful enough to harm us, so you can touch gently with one wet finger. Sea stars are animals we all recognize. They have hundreds of suction cup feet under each arm an eye spot at the end of each arm, and a mouth underneath the center of their body. They hold tightly to rocks when the tide is out. While you're exploring, leave your empty buckets high up on the beach. Then you won't be tempted to carry any animal away from its home. Using walking feet means animals can survive if we accidentally step on them. It will also keep you safe, as the beach can sometimes be slippery and uneven. These wonderful living animals need to be cold and wet to survive. Our hands are hot and dry. If you touch, touch gently with one wet finger. Leaving rocks in place means we won't crush the delicate animals living underneath. Leaving animals where we find them means they stay in their homes instead of ending up in a neighborhood far away. Empty shells can provide a home for a hermit crab and other beach life. It's best to leave all shells on the beach. Thank you so much for exploring with us. For more information about beach life, visit our website at seattleaquarium.org.